Okay, welcome back. We are going to start a new page. We just finished her off last time, and um, she is in the download PDF of Whimsy Girls Christmas. It's six ninety five, and you can get it over at that website right there, hannahlinart.com slash store slash c12 slash coloring underscore books dot html um just push pause and write it down it's fine so if you missed our last one it was um the virgin mary with baby jesus and this time we're going to be working on this one and i have already written down the colors i'm going to be using i am going to be using oh, the clock the prisma colors this time so, and I will try to remember to name these off as I use them and make no promises. So let's start with the pair. It's going to be 909, 912, 911, 1097. When you're coloring, it's a good idea to look up an image if you don't necessarily know what color something is. So we're going to start with the pairs. I am going to start with the highlight area. I, these are little snowdrops or snowballs, flurries, whatever. I am not going to worry about those. Not too much. I guess I'll go around them maybe. But um, actually, I'm going to go right over them. And then what I will do is go back in later and erase where they were or put dots of white paint over them. And... I'm thinking that's basically it. And that's good because odd number is always more pleasing to the eye. So you can see I wasn't very particular. I went on the right one-third area and got that color in. Now that was the 989. So now I'm moving over to 912. 912 is going to be this side. Blend it in, and then around the other side, blend it in. What happened is we just made that first color our highlight. Okay, we put it in there first, and it's our highlight now. If you're not using the Prisma colors, just find something that's equivalent in the pencils you're using. I am still working, yes, I am still working on a conversion chart. It's just taking me a while because I'm pulling out my um, swatches and comparing the colors and then writing down what the best match is for the pencils I have. When I get that finished, it will be over in my Etsy. And I'll, I'll be sure and post that so y'all know when it's done. Okay, then I'm going to come back with that first color. And I'm going to blend all this. Just so we have a nice transition from one color to the next. See, I'm just going around there, blending it all in my circles. Using a big circle and just going around where the two colors overlap. Okay? Next color, we are going to go to 911, and I'm going to come right here down the edge. Same thing on all these, down that left edge. That's just where I'm choosing to put the darker color, because usually pairs are darker down one side. You could do dark down one side of one and the, the other. It, it doesn't matter. Okay. Then the last color is this 1097. This is quite a bit darker. We're going to come back in in a minute and blend all of this. You might say, why is my hand in the middle of a picture for all this? Because there are people out there that would try to 
pause and take a picture of this and print it out in black and white so that they don't have to pay for it. And it is an item that is for sale over on Hannah Lynn's post. And she has done such a good job. And I just try to respect the artist. So I seldom let you have access to the entire piece all at once. Just because, unfortunately, there are those people out there. So now you can see we have our pairs. Easily done. Easily done. Okay. All right. And there you have your nicely blended little pairs. I will come back in later with the white paint and put little highlights on them, probably. I'm not going to worry about that right now. So these greens were done. Let's do that partridge. He is very involved. Um, the colors I have picked for the partridge was this middle column, if you needed to go back and write that down. Now, again, I looked up a picture of a partridge, and I'm going to do the best I can um, from the notes I took over here. Black is going to be the last color we use because it's the darkest, and we don't want to smear it around. White, I generally just leave the area white, but I'm going to go ahead and do it this time. I'm not sure why, I just am. So there's my white, and I did go over the line just a bit there, and it shows up. I'm not really worried about that. Um, a, ta a tannish gray. And I just pulled some colors. I'm not sure exactly what I'll be using. Um, this is called Espresso. It's $10.99. Is that right? Sometimes these colors are just hard to read. Yes, $10.99. And then this one is Sandbar Brown. It's $10.94. So I'm going to use a mix of these two. And I'm just going to put it up in here. And then all through here is gray and white. This is also um, a brown. So let's just do this in a mix of these colors real quick. We are keeping it sloppy and choppy because we want it to look like feathers and like it's textured. So don't worry about being real smooth on this. Um, the tail is also, I believe, in these colors. And I'm going the direction that tail feathers would go. And I'm just adding the two colors just so that it's not a solid mass of just one color. Okay. Then these reds and oranges, I'm going to use 923 and 1032. The 923 is the red one, and I'm going to put it right down here on the beak. And it would be his feet also, but his feet are black here, so I don't have to do anything. And then this is just that second color, just to help dull that pink back, or that red back just a little. Okay, then we have our brown and our black. Now, this is the gray and white. So I don't think I actually pulled a gray. So let's go to the Prismacolors real quick. And I'm going to pull, let's pull this one. This is a warm gray, 30%. It's 10.52. Let's add that to our list. 10.52. That first color, that 9.38, that is white can't write it in white, so that's why it's a different color. Okay, so this is actually white and gray all through here. So I'm going to put the lines the direction that it would be for feathers coming out. And if I'm going a little too fast for you, all you have to do is push pause. You can catch up. I think the other day I said click rewind. 
Yeah, I'm kind of old, old school. I remember the old VCR tapes. Yeah, don't tell me you don't know what a VCR is. That's sad. <laughs> we actually still have a few, but they're back up. We've had everything converted over. But, um, yeah, you can get a machine through Walmart, I think it is, online that'll convert and do it yourself. Okay, now I'm going to go to the white. It's not going to show up a lot, but it does help blend and cover some of that gray so that you get another shade in there. So we're just, I'm not going to be real particular on this. I want him to look choppy. And then I've got my brown, which is the 946. And it's actually a dark brown. And I'm going to put that all through here. Still keeping it kind of choppy and loose. And if there's a color over there I didn't use, then don't worry about it. I'm going to pick up this. It's the 1099 Espresso. And just mix it in with this. Just to give a little more texture in that wing. Okay, then this should be the same as that. What do you bet? Because it's the other side. So let's pick up this dark brown again. And then the espresso. And this side would actually be a little darker because it's around on the other side. We can't see it quite as well. Here we go. Now the black. I'm going to put a little bit of black here and a little up here just to darken that side because it's wrapped around. All right, I'm going to do the same thing here, just a little. Just, I mean, you can barely see that. And that's what you want, just barely there. It just gives that curved look. Okay, right up here. Because that's tucked up under his body. All right, then this is supposed to be black. I'm not going to do a solid black because I think we would lose his eye and I don't want to do that. So I'm going at it kind of light and then what I'm going to do is deepen it here and then come out to lighter, deepen it here, come out to lighter, deepen, deepen in those back recesses where it wraps around his body. So now we have that illusion of it being black without totally blacking it in. Um, somebody asked once, well, how would you do somebody in black clothes to where it looked black? Same idea as here. Just make sure some of it's black, but don't go so black that you can't see some of those grays in there. So there, Partridge is finished up close. There you go, and I'm good with that. So the next thing, let's get the tree done. I only have four colors pulled here. I have 945 and 1082. That is gonna be the actual branches, okay? Now, you could do all these wavy lines See, like that, or you can just go at it either way. Either way is good. Now, what is this? This is more wavy lines, not ribbon. Okay. See, I like to keep my trees um, just really jaggedy, and that lets me have, now I think this is the rest of this. It lets me put in two or three shades so that the tree looks like bark. 
And again, you could go along those lines and it would be fine. Now we've got to figure out what's ribbon and what's tree. Okay, this is tree, this is tree, this is tree, this is tree. I think that's tree and that. This, I think, is part of her mitten on the other side because that tree would come straight down like this. So now I'm taking 1082 and I'm just adding some more color. It would be darker where it's back in here. Okay. Just keep going. Darker, maybe where it went into the ground a little. Darker around the edges. Just switching back and forth between your two browns. I have not used this one up in here yet, so. Darker anywhere where it's on the bottom sticking out from under. It's out from under. This is under. This is a tip. These are V's. Remember those victorious V's. You want to get them a little darker. And we're going to do it darker through here just because his body would be casting a shadow there. Okay. Just get some dark in here. If you want to follow those lines some, feel free to follow them. There's no rhyme or reason, no rules. I know there's some basic, we call them rules, that we try to follow when we're coloring, but it still comes down to you have to be the one that's happy with your picture, whatever you've done with it. And this is whimsical, so just go ahead and have fun. These color along videos are just to help you kind of decide if you're stuck on a color or to help you get through a um, blending process. Okay, now that tree to me looks all one color, even though I've used two colors. So I am going to come back with... This is laying out over here. What is this? 946. You see how particular I am? I'm not. I'm just trying to get some more color in there. Just a different shade. Okay. We added it here. We need to flip it over and add it back here. 946 and also I'm going to go ahead and add 935 because I'm going to add a little bit of black in the darkest areas where there might be some shadows and don't make it too dark just a bit here and there is all you need okay you don't want a black tree. You just want the illusion of some shadows. So anywhere where it came out from under, I'll go ahead and do that area. Do some of this. Now I'm kind of following those lines a little bit. Now when you look at it, do you see how there's more color to it? All right, and here is my coloring tissue from the other day. So I am going to come in and buff my pears, and I'm going to buff my brown. What it does is just takes away that choppy, streaky part that the um, pencils actually leave from the wax buildup because these are 
Now see, I did the lightest and went to the darkest. Because these are a wax base, they leave a, leave a little bit of buildup. But see how smooth that trunk looks now? That's what I was after. Okay, next part, the green leaves. So I have these two greens, um, 1096 Kelly Green, and dark green is 908. I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the tips in the lightest. Anything that's sticking out is going to get this lighter shade. And we're probably going to time out while doing this. So anything that's on the top is going to get this. Does that make sense? So this is underneath. See, these are all on top of this. So this gets the dark. And then come out to lighter so it blends. This gets dark come out to lighter so that it blends dark to the lighter dark then get lighter if your blend doesn't work so well for you see right there might be under just a little um, you come back with your lighter color and use it to blend. Now, this is going to time out before I get finished. So, shall I show you where all the lights are or where all the darks are? What do you think? Because I know you're going to want to see. Okay, let me show you where all the darks are going to be. This is going to be dark right here. Here, here, here. Don't just put your darks in like I am. I want you to pause the video and put in your lights first. Now, what is that? I'm going to say it's a leaf sticking out. You're going to pause the video, go through and do your lights first. The lights are anything I'm not doing right now. Okay, the lights are what I'm not doing. So go in and do your lights first. Then do your darks. This whole area would probably be dark. Most of this is going to be dark. That little tip might be light. All right, so that's going to be your homework. That may be the bottom of a pear. Hmm. And this may be another pear flipped upside down. But that's too pointed for a pear. That is awfully rounded. I'm still going to make it a leaf just because I like the idea of having three there. A lot of this is going to be dark because it's back in behind. That's where those leaves are just piled up. Okay, someone might be saying, but that's the background, that's the sky. It could have been, except these are so massively overlayered. Don't you think these would be too? So that's why I'm just going to go ahead and do it all in the dark. I think you're getting the idea here, though. Anything that's tucked underneath is going to be dark. And then the parts that are on top are going to be light. This is under the edge. This is under the edge. This, this, this. So don't do the darks first. I'm just showing you where they're going to be. So that you can go back through and do the lights. And then do your darks and blend them in. Okay, over here it's going to be everywhere where it's sticking under the edge of the tree. Then 
and when we come back, you'll see mine finished. If you're having any problems, you can look at it then. And if you need to compare, then you can. But don't don't stress over it. There's a um, old saying that if it's green, it's a leaf. People's eyes are going to catch on that it's a leaf. So don't stress over it. This is what's underneath. All the rest of it's the light, excuse me, the lighter color. So do your lighter color, then come back in and put all these darks in. I'm just showing you where the darks would be. I don't want us to run out of time on this video and you'd be going, oh, wait a minute, she didn't finish. And I'm trying to get the videos where they're not taking as much time. So you're going to have to have a little bit of homework. Besides, you can do it. If you've been doing color alongs, you're, you're getting better at this. Ooh, that little thing there. We're going to have to look and see what color that's supposed to be. All right, so now everything else is going to be the light color, and I'll come back and do some blending. So let me just get started with this. And see my darks are not dark enough there so I'm gonna have to come back in with more dark and then get lighter more dark then get lighter and then come back in and blend that Okay. So do two or three. And then put that dark in if you want to. Then come back in with the light and blend. Now, if you're using regular um, Crayola colored pencils, when you put that dark in, you need to fade it out very quickly because it's not going to be as easy to blend as these pencils are. Oh, it's highly doable. Yes, I've seen some beautiful work done with the regular Crayola pencils. Um, the only colored pencil I really, really don't like is anything made by Rose Art. Um, they just, I don't know, they don't seem to have the colors or the blendability that I like, so I just stay away from those. But other than that, you can get most anything to work for you. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and are interested in coming to a coloring workshop class in my home in Garland, leave a message for me in the comments. I do those every now and then. I've got one coming up in, I think, March. I'll be giving away a tumbler that you can slide the insides out and color it. So yeah, we color for four hours. Bring your own lunch. I think it's $20 is what I have it listed at. Okay, so can you see how the darks are in there? So I'm going to stop this at 30 minutes, and we're almost there. So this is homework. Just finish going around, doing all your leaves. Do the light area, then come back in and put your darks in. And you can do all your lights at once if you want, and then come back and do all your darks. I just like a little bit of gratification as I go. So that's why I go ahead and do some darks every now and then, 
just because then I know I'm making headway. All right, so keep doing this all the way around the tree. And I will see you back in a little bit when we start on the next part. All right, talk to you later.